Hello everybody. Well, I'm finally back. So I finished off on the Shark Nebula June 27th. That was the last time I actually had a decent night out imaging. I'm all set up and I'm going to go after SH2-155, which is the Cave Nebula. This uh, object is in Cepheus, so it's in a pretty good location uh, for me. It's a emission nebula, uh, consisting mainly of hydrogen gas. And I'm going to go big on this, or as Chuck always says. So I don't know how long I'm going to be, at, how, when you're going to see this video. As I said, June 27th, right now it's July 13th. It's been almost three weeks and the weather has been horrible here for astrophotography. I actually have managed to get 4.7 hours of HA data so far over five, six nights of trying to image a little bit here and a little bit there but as i said i don't this weather i've never seen a stretch of bad weather like this um tonight's supposed to be not good so we'll see what happens anyways my name is kurt zepatello and you're watching astro quest one well hello folks but this is officially the longest project I've worked on. Uh, I, it's been over a month now, and it's two weeks after the last time when I introduced this. I'm still working on uh, SH2-155, which is the cave nebula, but I'm this, this might be the last night I'm doing it because this is sulfur. I'm capturing four-minute exposures of sulfur right now, and there's a faint thing in there. So uh, this is pretty much what the oxygen looked like too. It was really, really faint, barely noticeable. And the the, the hydrogen looked pretty good uh, when I stacked that. So I've had all sorts of problems with this. Not with the, not with the process or anything. It was just the, the, the weather has been horrible. It's unbelievable. Not only that, I had a focusing issue in, in Nina. And let me show you Nina, by the way. This was my last focusing. When I after I did the automatic focus, uh, I'm seeing 54 stars, and the HFR is down to 2.3. Anything below three, usually down below 2.5, is pretty good focus. One of these nights I had like 1.9, which is uh, I rarely have that. But anyways, what happened with the focusing is I must have done something when I was making some flats like two or three weeks ago in the gain setting. In Nina, I turned it to zero, and then, was, then the autofocus never worked for like two days. I was screwing around with it, and I had to focus the old-fashioned way with the Botanoff mask But uh, before I finally figured out what was wrong. And then the even worse problem I had was the camera. It started to get condensation, and I believe it was on the uh, glass plate above the sensor, and so that was that took a couple days away to find out to diagnose it. Really, it's been really humid here too, but I finally diagnosed that that was the problem. And what I ended up doing was just rejuvenating the desiccant desiccant tablet. So I took my camera apart, which was scary, but I did it. I just rejuvenated the desiccant tablets, and uh, it's been working fine since. So, anyways, uh, hopefully I'll be, next time you hear from me, I'll be processing and finishing up this thing. We'll see you later. Hey, hey, everyone. Well, it's about a week later, and yippee, I finally finished. So, let me go through my uh, quick processing here, what I did. And I also want to show you something, uh, something else that's pretty interesting I noticed recently. Anyway, so here's the sulfur. The sulfur came out really well on this object. So, it was almost 10 hours of sulfur, I think, something like that. Uh, oxygen was the least uh, amount that gave an effect. Although there is there is uh, there's oxygen here clearly, but it wasn't pronounced as much as the sulfur, nor was it pronounced as much as the um, as the HA. So the HA there was about eight and a half hours, about nine and a half hours of oxygen, and probably eight and a half of sulfur. Okay, so then I also collected about an hour and a half of RGB about half hour on each channel and this is what I wound up with. So pretty nice I, I think. So I got some nice star color there and I did the normal combination, the SHO combination for the narrowband stuff. 
I tried different variations too, but actually the SHO SHO came out the best. So lots of lots of data there. Then I used Starnet on Pix Insight. So I've I've used Starnet before, but I did it as a separate. But now I downloaded the Pix Insight version, and this is what I wound up with. So it came out uh, pretty good, pretty interesting. I didn't like the purplish around the outside though, but uh, so it got quite no a little bit noisy. But I had a lot of noise to deal with. Okay, so then I started doing some of the other enhancements in Photoshop. So let me boot up Photoshop here. So here is the RGB, and I played around with the background to uh, lessen the darkness. Here is that starless image that I started tweaking the colors with. And when I mean by tweaking the colors, I, I actually go into the adjustment layer, and down here in selective color, that's where I do all my... Uh, color enhancements. And I've shown you, shown you this before as well. So I took that and playing around with the color enhancements, I had the colors modified to this. And then I added the stars back again. And then I did some more tweaking and wound up with this. And so this was the final image, although I did crop it. So what did I want to show you real quickly? Well, I when I first started processing, I used Lightroom as well. That's Adobe Lightroom. And this is Lightroom. Uh, this is a common neo -ice. In Lightroom, when you bring it in, you'll notice Lightroom is really powerful. And it's a really good program. The only problem I don't like about Lightroom is the files and folders and whatnot. It's really clunky in that aspect. It's clunky in some other ways too, but it does a lot. It does really well. And a lot of regular photographers, not astrophotographer, regular photographers use this as well. And they use this as their chief program. Uh, but like, and, and there's a good reason. Look at all the stuff it does. I mean, I'm just, I'll just scroll down, tone curve, all this stuff, saturation. You can, you can do a hue, saturation, luminescence, and control all the colors. So it's a very, very, very powerful program. It has sharpening, noise reduction, and vignetting fixes. And I still use this, and I've been using it. But I don't use that on every image because, as I said before, it's, it's sort of clunky for me. So why am I bringing that to your attention? Well, another program that's embedded into Photoshop, which I hadn't really thought about using. I never, I actually, the only time I ever came across it is when I upload a DSLR image. It uses that Adobe Raw. So here's what I mean. If you go to Filter and come down to Camera Raw Filter, this is what would appear, and I, I never used, I never did anything with this program. I just hit OK and then brought it into Photoshop. But this program pretty much does what Lightroom does. And actually, it was Trevor Jones who first brought me on to this. Uh, I was watching some recent videos, and they must have done some more additions to this to this camera raw. But he was using this left and right, and so I said, oh, my God. And I started using it, and I just noticed that it, it sort of does what Lightroom does. And you can use it at any time in any of your folder, folders. So it gives you the temperature and the tint, the exposure, contrast, shadows, and highlights, and all this stuff. And a lot of you guys probably already know about this, but I, I didn't. Texture, clarity, vibrance. So this is exactly what um, curves, you want to do curve transformations in, in this. Detail sharpening, noise reduction. Again, everything that was in Lightroom is pretty much in this this Adobe RAW. So I am just tickled to death right now. Uh, it has its own vignetting uh, program uh, in here. So it's uh, very powerful. Yeah, here it is, the vignetting. So it's all in here. And so now I can actually use this. So I actually use this for uh, part of my processing. And the good thing about doing the Adobe Raw in Photoshop is you can make a layer out of it. And if you make it as a separate layer, you can can ma use masks with it too. So that's that's really powerful. Anyways, I'm just rambling on now. Sorry about rambling on. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you later.